It's Mental Health Awareness Month. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out our system for helping you go from anxious to awesome. There are two key ingredients and it might not be what you think. Hello, Mira Binzen here, author of Anxious to Awesome, a practical guide for the whole family and co-founder, along with my mama and my sister, of Global Family Wellness. We are here to empower you and your family to thrive. Understanding these two key ingredients can really help you see like, oh yes, I can do this. The first ingredient we use is awareness. This is a big word, but here in A to A land, we like to keep things simple and practical and actionable. So that's what we're gonna do. You can think of awareness like a flashlight. It's one of those cool flashlights that you can twist in for a sharp focus and see something very clearly, or twist open for a big floodlight effect and see a lot at once. So you can think of awareness like a light. It's also called consciousness or you know, paying attention, being aware of things, noticing things, all of that. There's so many great examples of when we're aware, when we're not. In fact, I have a story from my own life. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's a great example of awareness or lack thereof. We were in Thailand and we were climbing. It was a very popular climbing place in Raleigh Bay, Thailand, beautiful. And I was climbing, it was the first time in my life. So I strapped in, I had the ropes, somebody was on the ground with my, holding my ropes and I started climbing and I had no idea what I was doing. And I got maybe 10 feet off the ground, which isn't that far away from the ground, but for me, I was up there and I was trying to figure it out and I was grunting and growing and cursing. And I was just like, ah, I was in it, in my little spot on the wall there, just 10 feet from the ground. And when I got back down on the ground, I was so embarrassed because I looked around and people were right there, like right there. It wasn't that far away. It felt like I was a million miles away, right? Up on this rock wall. <laughs> but that's an example of I wasn't aware. I just wasn't aware that there were people right there that could hear me very clearly. And my awareness expanded when I got down and got a different perspective. So that's one of the keys to awareness is shifting your perspective. One thing you can think about when you're developing awareness is that you're the star of your own movie. Your life is this amazing blockbuster movie and you're the star. You can choose, however, to be like the director and go take a seat in the cushy theater seats and watch the movie. So when you step back and become more of the observer or more of the witness of what's going on, that helps you to be more aware. You can also say being present, being with what is. It's pretty cool and there's actually some simple tools that you can use to develop more awareness. I've got another example for you from my own life. So I would wake up some days and just feel really low, like ugh, terrible, very low moods, very just like not great. I didn't feel great and I didn't know why. And then one day I noticed, I became more aware that when I ate a lot of pizza the night before, I woke up the next day and had a really low mood. So it, fect it affected my mood. And it took me a long time to realize that. And so I kept noticing, when I eat pizza, how do I feel the next day? Terrible, like every time. And so for me, I know I have a couple of choices. I can choose to not eat pizza, but I'm American, right? So we eat pizza. <laughs> or I can do some things that will help my body digest it better. So I can take digestive enzymes or something and eat less pizza. So awareness also leads to empowered choices. Sounds good, right? All right, so the second key ingredient on the journey from anxious to awesome is connection. Connection is who we are. Being a part of it all feels good. The root cause of feeling unwell is a lack of connection. One of the best examples I've ever seen of this was an Indian spiritual teacher called Aswami. His name was Swami Satchidananda. He had a whiteboard next to him. And on the whiteboard, he simply wrote these two words. He wrote the word, word illness, and then he wrote the word wellness. And he said, what's the difference? He didn't say a word. He simply took his Sharpie 
and circled the I of illness, and he circled the W-E, the we of wellness. He very beautifully demonstrated without saying a word that feeling like you're separate and alone is part of feeling ill, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And we, being together in a group, helps us to experience wellness. And it's really like that. You can think of connection like the electricity in your home. It's always there, but we don't experience until we plug in. So you're not going to get your tea kettle to heat up the water for you or get that piece of toast toasted until you're plugged in to the electricity. And when we talk about connection and how important it is to our well-being, we can see what a challenge it's been. For the last couple of years, a lot of us have been really isolated. And so that makes it harder for us to experience well-being. And so we have to work even even more to regain connection. So you can think of awareness as light, and this light reveals the connection of all things. And that might sound a little esoteric or woo-woo, or like, how do I apply that in my life? But we want to make this practical and easy to use. So we have five areas where you can cultivate awareness and connection. Your body, breath, mind, nature and people. In these five areas of life, we want to work to develop more awareness and more connection. Being more aware of your body helps you make empowered choices. For example, when you get a knot in your stomach before a test and you become aware, oh, I have anxious feelings. And then you use tools that help your body release that knot in your tummy. Feeling connected in your body means that when you have different sensations, you're aware of it. And also when you physically move your body, it can increase your body awareness. So paying attention to feelings inside your body and moving your body are two really great ways to develop more awareness and more connection to your body. You can also develop more awareness of your breath. How is your breath moving right now? You might be surprised to find out that you're holding your breath sometimes a lot of times when we're nervous or a little tense we hold our breath to be more aware of it and allows you to make an empowered choice so that you can be more connected to your breath and take a deep breath and then when you take a deep breath it has a nice impact on your nervous system so it's a very cool system and it's easy to do anybody can do this being more aware of your mind what kind of thoughts are you having right now Is it a positive thought or a negative thought? Hey, if it's a negative thought, don't worry because it's estimated that about 80% of our thoughts are negative. Our primitive brain is looking for what's wrong because what's wrong might be threatening and we want to stay safe. So there's a tendency to have negative thoughts. So if you do notice a negative thought, that's okay. Now that you've noticed, you can make an empowered choice and think something positive, choose a different thought. So there's another example. Being aware of nature is one of the most powerful tools we have. There's so much good research out there that shows the benefits of being connected to nature and being aware of nature. And people, we are social creatures. Being connected is crucial to our well-being and to our mental health. So we've got our two key ingredients, awareness and connection, and five areas of life where we want to cultivate more awareness and more connection. Our body, our breath, our mind, nature, and people. Now, there's three times of day where you can do this. We call it formal practice and on-the-go practice. So every morning to start your day, just a few minutes, spend some time being more aware of your body and be more connected to your body and your breath and your mind, and nature and people. It can be something as simple as noticing the birds in the trees as you walk from your house to a car. Something like that, awareness, paying attention, turning on your flashlight to see what's going on within you and around you. So every morning, just a few minutes is a great time to do this. And then on the go throughout the day, take a moment and be like, am I holding my breath? What kind of thoughts am I thinking? How does my body feel right now? What's going on in the world around me? And who am I hanging out with right now? 
and also before bed. We call this sweet sleeps. We need to quiet our mind and body down to get ready for some sweet sleeps. And so if you can do some of these kinds of simple activities to develop more awareness and more connection, it will help your body and mind settle down for sweet sleeps. So little things that you can do throughout your day to feel less anxious and more awesome. The cool thing about this is that we're getting at the root cause of anxious feelings. There's a lot going on with anxiety and we don't want to oversimplify it because it's a complex condition and there are some simple things you can do that get at the root cause of feeling anxious and you know you can do it for yourself and if you want some extra help with this, come on over to anxioustoawesome.com. Join our community. We're sharing lots of fun resources like this that are easy to implement in your day-to-day -day basis. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we'll continue to provide positive, practical, and actionable strategies for your sparkling mental health. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Have an awesome day and we'll see you again soon.